Well, a happy, happy, happy Easter morning to all of you from Miss Ann and myself, David Johnson, here at the little studio in Wilkes County, North Carolina. We've all lived to see another birthday of our faith come around. And I hope that you're in a mood to celebrate it today, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, uh, because it's something to celebrate. Stay with us for a few minutes, if you will, and we'll talk about why it's important to realize how blessed we are to have both a resurrection to remember and another one to look forward to. And please join us at 10 o'clock this morning for our Easter worship service online at the Facebook uh, page of Arbor Grove United Methodist Church. That's Arbor Grove United Methodist Church, A-R-B-O-R, -R, Arbor Grove. Pastor Susie's going to be bringing the message, as she always does, from John chapter 20 today. And Cousin Eric Ellis and myself will have some string music to go along with it, as well as uh, Lois Doss on the old piano, and the whole house is going to be singing along, and we want you to be singing along with us. So come be with us if you uh, need somewhere to worship. We'd love to have you right there. Now that'll be at 10 o'clock this morning at Arbor Grove United Methodist Church in Perlier, North Carolina. Now some of you may have already been to an early sunrise service this morning, or if you're viewing this later in the week, you might have already had a bunch of various church services this past weekend, and uh, maybe this week you might have gone to a Maundy church service. We uh, had one at our church. Uh, I was recording in Asheville and didn't make it, but Miss Annie made it and said it was a beautiful service. You know, uh, let me sip this just a little. I wish I could share that with you this morning. Back in past uh, d decades, uh, Miss Ann and myself were youth directors uh, with the young folks at Arbor Grove. And uh, we held that job for many years and we were glad to do it. We were responsible for many sunrise services that had a passion play. Uh, mostly put on by the young folks and for many many years we would get together and learn our lines and build sets for the scenes and put on these plays out in the big field out behind the church just about daybreak on Easter Sunday morning and the scenes were important uh, not only for the congregation that watched the play and we always had a good crowd for that but uh, uh, it were important that they hear the lines of scripture that were in the dialogue. But these things were most important for the kids that were in the play as well. By learning these lines and seeing these scenes over and over again, the Easter story became familiar to the actors, just like the Christmas story did. And when the young folks uh, saw us adults taking this story seriously, they knew that we believed it and they would come to believe it too. That was always our prayer. So I, I guess the most important two sets that we had out there in the field uh, during those days was uh, the, the scene of Calvary where the crucifixion scene uh, where Jesus gave his life for sinners on the cross. That was an important one. And then most importantly, the tomb that was empty, the empty tomb set. We had several of them, did it several different ways. These were the most important thoughts that we wanted both the kids that acted out the parts and also the congregation that watched the play to remember that Jesus loved us enough to die for us, to be forgiven of our sins, and most importantly, that he was not in the tomb any longer because he had risen from the dead. And even though Miss Ann and I have uh, different duties in the church these days, our desire is still the same. That folks everywhere can know those two facts. That Jesus loved us enough to die for us. And that he did not stay in that tomb. He rose to go to the Father in heaven and he wants us to be there too. Now, that should be the greatest news that any of us will ever hear. Now, speaking of good news, right here are some good things that might happen to us in this life. 
uh, I know a lot of folks uh, hope for these things to happen anyway. You know, some folks buy a lottery ticket, and if you're a lottery ticket buyer, uh, you might win a big lottery of some kind. Now, that, that might be good for our pocketbook, I'd have to admit. Uh, we might get a good health report at the doctor's office. That's always good to cheer us up. We might get a good job, or we might be recognized for something that we have done in the community, or uh, if we're the political type, we might run for political office as a candidate and win. And that's always good things. There's, there's a million great things that might happen to us here in this life that would make us happy and cause us to celebrate. But you know all those things will eventually come to an end, because life is a limited thing when we're here on this earth. It's just going to have an end to it, and that's just the way it is. You know, uh, some of these little old babies only live a few hours or a few days and, uh, because of one thing or another, but some of them grow up to have big, long lives. Some young folks pass away uh, early due to accidents or disease. That's always a, a horrible thing to, to have to see and, and sometimes to be a part of if they happen to be your your youngin or your kinfolk, but some of them grow strong and they grow up and they make parents and grandparents and great grandparents. None of us knows how long we're going to be here, but even God's word says it won't be a long time. Psalm 90 verse 10 says, the days of our years are three score years and ten. Well, that's about 70 the way they calculate, and it says, if by reason of strength they may be fourscore years. We see a lot of people make it to 80 and beyond. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. In other words, we ain't here too long. And since it goes by so quickly, we might actually get depressed about it ending too soon. Folks, think about passing away a lot and they get down in the dumps about it sometimes everybody wants to go to heaven nobody wants to die is the old saying and we don't like to think about dying or being buried in a grave but our grave is just like the grave that Jesus Christ was placed in after his crucifixion you know that you know as a matter of fact he didn't even own a grave the Bible says it was a grave provided by a man who had it made for himself it was hewed out in the rock. That's the way they made graves back then. And he let Jesus be buried there. It was a borrowed tomb. And just like the gospel said, Jesus only needed it for three days. He didn't need it very long. I bet he didn't get it dirty. Matthew says that he rose from the dead on the third day, and many people saw him and talked to him. If you don't like to read it in Matthew, go read it in Mark. There's four Gospels. Mark says that he arose from the dead within three days and even showed up during a meal that the disciples were having. Alive. Luke says that he came out of the tomb after three days, walked with some of his followers and talked with them, sat at meals with them, and he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for great power to come to them. And the Gospel of John says at the end of three days, Jesus didn't need that tomb any longer, that grave. He had no use for the grave because he came out of it alive and he appeared to his disciples and he talked with them. He ate with them. He encouraged them. And he even cooked them a meal on the seashore. Go read it in John, book of John. All four Gospels tell you, and more scripture besides, that he rose you know, folks, if, if you believe in a risen Jesus, then you have got to realize that your grave is just like his grave. It's just a borrowed tomb. Ain't our property down here no way. When you get right down to it, we didn't bring it with us. We're not going to take it when we leave. It's just temporary. And we're not going to need that grave forever because if we're going to live eternally with Christ... What use do we have for a casket and hole in the ground? Because John 3.16 says that to believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior is to have eternal life. 
And here's some more scripture that talks about that. John 11, 25 says, Jesus was talking to the sister of Lazarus. And you remember Lazarus, he raised him from the dead. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. If you've ever heard that story of Lazarus, it's in the Bible too. You know that Jesus told him to come out of that grave, that tomb, even though he'd been dead for days. And Lazarus came out. And even later, you know what you'll find him doing with Jesus? You'll find him over in Scripture sitting down and eating a meal with Jesus after he was resurrected from the dead. Lazarus didn't need that tomb, but a few days. Philippians 3, verse 20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven. For if we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself, our citizenship is in heaven. And we're going to have a new body, that says. A different body. I'm ready for a different one. This one hurts a lot. It's going to be in a new home where we're citizens. We're going to be recognized there. Why would we want a corruptible body down here? And why would we want a permanent tomb down here? My point is this. If we repent of our sins, if we confess to God that we have failed to keep his laws, and all of us have, all of us do, and ask for Jesus to come into our heart as our God. In other words, believe in him. That active kind of belief. Then our tomb is going to be exactly like the tomb of Jesus. As far as our existence is concerned, our tomb can be empty too. Our body may be buried, but the part of us that's really us, our living soul, that's what God calls it in Genesis a living soul when he breathed the breath of life into Adam. Our living soul will not be in a tomb. It'll be eternally living in the presence of our risen Savior and in the presence of God the Father. All it requires of us is our faith in a risen Christ. We can't get there without faith in him. And when we have it, we will see the time that we won't need our borrowed tomb anymore. Somebody else can have the hole, have the casket, have the, the remains, and have the ground that it's laying in. You know, whether it's a painting by a great artist or, uh, or a homemade set in a church play somewhere that you might have even already seen today, or just the picture in your mind that Scripture brings, we hope that your heart will be filled to the brim today with Jesus Christ and that eventually your tomb will be empty like his. Amen. Here's a song that the Lord gave me back in 2004 and the good folks at Crossroads Music in the Asheville, North Carolina, Jeff Collins and Mickey Gamble and all those folks let me record it up there. And uh, this was uh, a song that at the time I thought, you know, this might make a pretty good Easter song. And uh, it's got a lot of words, but I've got them out here where I can see them. It's called The Sun Rose Up A Shining. took our Lord from the garden of Gethsemane and tried him in the middle of the night. And old Satan must have laughed when Pilate washed his hands and said, take him to what you think is right. So they beat him and they mocked him and they nailed him to the cross. So he yielded up his life for you and me. Then they laid him in a borrowed tomb and sealed it with a rock, thinking this would be the end of him, you see. But then the sun rose up for shining, and the chains of sin that fell away. His precious
precious blood had paid the highest ransom when the Son of God redeemed us on that resurrection day. Sometimes we may struggle with a life that's filled with sin and old Satan keeps us bound in pain and fear. He robs us of our confidence and makes us feel ashamed and he tells us that there is no God that's near. But friend, I'm here to tell you don't you believe that lie The word of God said there's another way Just give your heart to Jesus And take him by the hand Like long ago he'll lead you from that grave Back when the sun rose up shining And the chains of sin they fell away His precious blood had paid the highest ransom the Son of God redeemed us on that resurrection day. When the Son of God redeemed us on that resurrection day. I hope you enjoyed that, folks, and I hope you have a wonderful Easter, regardless of your circumstances. If you trust the Lord and you believe in Jesus Christ, you've got everything to celebrate today. Amen. Have a good Easter. I'll see you next week, Lord willing.